What's good, YouTube? It is your boy, Big Cool, coming to you from Colossal Boxing Talk. And I am back with another video. This is the rundown discussing some of the latest boxing news. First up, Gilberto Ramirez wants a piece of Sergey Kovalev, the former WBO super middleweight champion, is aiming to fight at the end of March or April. Says that his body is feeling good. Um, it's responding well. He's been training since January. And he's looking for a little tune-up bout. Then he wants to set his uh, sights on WBO light heavyweight champion, Sergei the Crusher Kovalev, who just recaptured that title with a resounding, easy, unanimous decision victor, victory over Alidia Alvarez a few weeks ago. We all know with Gilberto Ramirez being the former WBO super middleweight champion, 168, he has the chance to apply uh, to get a, a you know immediate shot at the WBO light heavyweight champion, Sergey Kovalev. We've seen this in the past with Terrence Crawford, who had moved up from 140 to 147 and got the automatic mandatory status to challenge Jeff Horn for his WBO welterweight title. Um, last year, so this is nothing new. This is nothing surprising. So don't be alarmed. Whether you feel um, Ramirez warrants a shot um, at Kovalev or not, that is not neither here nor there. Of course, we would prefer to see him face um, Arthur Arthur Beterbiev, um, Alexander Gavazic, and Dmitry Bivol in unification bouts. But you know, we have to acknowledge that Gilberto Ramirez can make a claim that he, um, you know, should get a shot next based on what he did in the prior division, although I don't agree with that. It is what it is, and that fight is a possibility. In terms of the matchup, Gilberto Ramirez, a guy who is, I want to say, 6'3", um, maybe a little shorter than that, was clearly outgrowing the super middleweight division. His last fight was in December um, in a rematch with Jesse Hart where he won... Um, I think this time it was a it was a unanimous decision, close unanimous decision or split decision to retain his title in the rematch. Um, you know, at one point Ramirez was thought to be the ruler, the future kingpin of 168. But as time drew on, he started to get exposed a little bit. He didn't look um, as phenomenal as he did against the likes of Arthur Abraham when he won that that WBO title what, back in 2015, 2016. Um, you know, in, in the first fight with uh, Jesse Hart and some, some subsequent fights. Um, but, you know, he's still a very talented fighter. Um, his glaring weaknesses are, you know, as a big, tall guy, he gives up his height. He, he slouches over, um, makes himself um, easy, accessible for, um, you know, the uppercuts and just punches coming in from an offensive-minded fighter. Uh, but at this point, if he was to get a fight with Sergey Kovalev, I mean, Kovalev did look excellent. He looked great under the tutelage of Buddy McGirt, uh, soon-to-be Hall, Hall of Famer Buddy McGirt. He looked good under him. Brady McGirt had, had him calm, cool, and collected, reminded him to pace himself, to not um, go for the knockout just because you can. Um, and Kovalev listened to his trainer for the first time in I don't know how long, stuck to the game plan, stayed the course, and easily, easily outboxed, outfought, and just outperformed Elidio Alvarez in their rematch. So I think this will be a hell of a fight between these two. It'll be interesting to see how well Gilberto Ramirez would take a punch at 175, especially from arguably the hardest puncher still in the division, Sergey Kovalev, who we know can crack. Um, his jab is considered a power punch. That's how powerful it is. Ask Andre Ward and other Sergey Kovalev opponents. Um, they will tell you how effective and how hurt, um, hurtful and punishing that jab from Sergey Kovalev really is. But, you know, I wouldn't mind this fight at all. Obviously, like I said before, I want to see him in unification bouts with the other champions. But we know how that happens. Nine times out of ten, what the boxing fan wants, we don't get right away. We'll get it um, a year, two, three years of down the line with both 
you know, fighters are past their prime. So hopefully um, we can get either this fight or the unification bouts between Kovalev and the other champions in the light heavyweight division to, you know, set some clarity and get some separation and, and pecking order um, in, at 175 to see, to see who's the real big dog is. Next up. Newly crowned IBF super middleweight champion Caleb Sweethands Plant is likely to make a summer title defense, his first title defense, when he takes on, wait for a drum roll, please, Mike Lee, yes, Mike Lee, famous for the Subway commercials, also famous um, for, you know, playing college football at Notre Dame. Um, he's 21 and 0 with 11 knockouts. His last opponent or his last fight came against Jose Hernandez. Um, you know, he's been a, a French contender at 175, if you want to call him that. And obviously, him being a long time light heavyweight, he will have to drop down in weight to challenge for his uh, for Plant's IBF super middleweight title, which would be Mike Lee's first ever world title opportunity as a professional fighter. Mike Lee is not that good of a fighter. He has a great story. He has the backing of, um, you know, a lot of people in the Chicago area. Like I said, he went to Notre Dame, played football, graduated from Notre Dame. Notre Dame is in South Bay, Indianapolis. That's not far at all from Chicago. So it's not um, crazy to think that the Chicago and his fellow, you know, Chicago is are, are rooting for Mike Lee. Uh, but, you know, if this fight is made, the two locations being discussed are Nashville, Tennessee, and Chicago, Illinois, or around the, the that area um, to stage the fight. And obviously, Caleb Plant, which I interviewed him before his fight uh, with Jose Ugatage, and I mentioned to him about the possibility of him coming to Nashville and fighting, and he immediately, immediately said he would love to do that. You know, he's from Ashland, um, Ashland or Ashbury, Tennessee, um, like 20 minutes from Nashville. Uh, he hasn't fought there since being a pro. I'll link the, um, I'll post the link to the article in the description below from 3kingsboxing.com so you can check it out for yourself, written by me. But he's from Tennessee. He hasn't fought there since turning professional in 2014. Um, and you know, this is his admiration. He's earned that title. He dominated Jose Ugatage. Uh, and, you know, now he's the champion. And this fight with Mike Lee has mismatch written all over it. Um, Caleb Plant can do a lot in the ring. He can box. He can move. He has solid power. Axe Ugatage, who was dropped by him twice. Um, he does everything well, man. He's very confident. And I think he, compared to Mike Lee, he's way athletic. And hence that I said compared to Mike Lee. Mike Lee is, um, you know, not as athletic as you, you would think for him being a former football player. But, you know, um, he's tough, has a good story behind him, has some backing, um, you know, with people in Chicago, Illinois, rooting for him. But at the end of the day, none of that shit matters when you step in the ring. Because it's you and your opponent um, that has to duke it out. And I think that once those fists start to fly, I think that Caleb Plant is going to overwhelm Mike Lee um, in front of the hometown um, fans uh, and retain his title rather, rather easily. But we shall see because the fights are fought in the ring and not on paper or film. And that's the bottom line because Big Cool said so. Final, final, final topic of the video. Vasil Lomachenko has put Teofimo Lopez on notice. He stated that if he was to fight Teofimo Lopez, that he, Lopez would likely quit by the sixth round. I'm paraphrasing a little bit, but y'all get what I'm trying to say. He said that he going to make this man quit. He going to make him do a rigging DL and all his other opponents that have quit um, in the past, Nicholas Walters, due to the skill set and the onslaught that was being laid upon their ass by Vasil Lomachenko. And we know Lomachenko is getting more and more confident by each fight. Each fight, he's growing and growing, um, and he's getting more confident. And honestly, man, I love Teofimo Lopez, but right now, right now, he get the ass beat Monday through Saturday, twice on Sunday. 
that's how far that gap is between him and say, you know, um, whoever, you know, the, the gap between, you know, Lomachenko and, and Teofimo Lopez is ridiculous. Yes, Lomachenko has 15 fights, but he has so much amateur experience. He has so much experience against, you know, Orlando Salido. He's fought, um, you know, Gary uh, Russell Jr. He's fought Miguel uh, Moraga, uh, Jose Pedraza, fought Jorge Linares. And why you say some of those guys are, eh, okay. A lot of those guys are former world champions or current world champions. So you have to give him that. Teofimo Lopez, he his fucking biggest fight was uh, Jesse Magdaleno, brother. And I can't even think of um, the older Magdaleno. But I know he got his ass beat um, by Teofimo Lopez um, a few weeks ago. Lopez is explosive. He's fast. He can box. He can punch. Charisma, personality. He's going to be a big draw. But Bob Arum is not stupid. He's not going to rush Teofimo Lopez into a fight with Vasil Lomachenko just to have him, you know, whoop his ass, take his confidence. You know what I'm saying? He looks in the, he look he looking at him along with Shakur Stevenson as his future cash cows. Right now it is Terrence Crawford and Vasil Lomachenko. But in the future down the line you got Oscar Valdez, you got Shakur Stevenson, and you got um Teofimo Lopez. So Bob Arum is going to let, you know, Teofimo Lopez talk of a potential fight with, between him and uh, Vasily Lomachenko. Do this, do that, only to block the fight because he knows in his heart of hearts that Teofimo Lopez is not ready for none of that smoke. And he's not, man. I aspire his, um, his willingness to want to go forward and, and you know, um, make a good account of himself. But I just see that, you know, Vasil Lomachenko being way too much for him at this moment in time. Also, you know, Teofimo went to Mexico to try to get, um, you know, a special waiver or the WBC to um, allow him to fight somebody for the, uh, you know, the, the WBC lightweight title that a lot of people believe that Mikey Garcia is going to um, vacate after his fight with Errol Spence March 16th. Um, but Teofimo Lopez has made it no secret that he wants to be a champion in 2019. That's what he wants to do. Bob Arum is confident in him. He's in on it. Um, Todd DeBuff and all those guys. And, you know, I don't blame him at all, you know, because he's been mentioned that he could face Luke Campbell. That would be a very good fight. Luke Campbell is a former 2012 Olympic gold medalist. He gave Jorge Linares one hell of a fight. A lot of people thought maybe he won that fight. Um, but, you know, he just won his rematch with Mindy. I think that that'll be an excellent fight. It could uh, turn out to be too big of a step up at this point for um, Teofimo Lopez. But if the young man believes in himself, let him get in there and throw hands and, and show the world and show these upper echelon fighters that it wasn't just talk. It was action as well. And you see what I am. I'm the next star in boxing. I'm the next pay-per-view draw. I'm the next, you know, mega star. You know what I'm saying? And he got everything you like in a fighter. You know, fast hands, athletic head movement, the ability to move his feet. Um, you know, he can punch. You know, he's fundamentally sound. He has everything you want, man. So we'll have to see what happens with uh, Teofimo Lopez um, moving forward. I know he's not getting a shot at Vasil Lomachenko, uh, at least not this year, and that is in his best interest. Um, you know, so we'll have to see how everything plays out. But if you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. If you enjoy the content throughout the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you want to be notified every time I upload videos, make sure you hit that bell icon so you won't miss any uploads from colossal box and talk always drop your comments in the comment section down below give me some feedback your thoughts on this video as well as shout out to the movement three kings boxing.com you know i write for them lead journalists we on the rise 
one of the top up and coming um, boxing um, outlets going. You know, we do interviews, we do recaps, fight previews, breaking news, you know, everything. We do everything, man. The team consists of a lot of knowledgeable cats, man, and I salute each and every one of them, and it's a pleasure working with them. So do me a favor. If you rock with Colossal Boxing, talking big cool, make sure you check out 3kingsboxing.com daily. We always pumping out um, content, stay in the loop with the latest boxing news on 3kingsboxing.com. Make sure you follow 3kingsboxing on Twitter and on Instagram. Also, make sure you head over to Facebook and smack that like button on the 3 Kings Boxing. Uh, Facebook page, as well as the Colossal Boxing Talk Facebook page, man. Um, until next time, I am out. Peace.